This is quite simply the worst MacBook I have ever owned, and I think it might be cursed. Now, that's a bold statement. I know what you're thinking. You're like, hey, Luke, this looks like a perfectly normal MacBook. It looks to be in fairly decent condition. It only has 80 cycles on the battery, and I paid just $220 for it. So what exactly is the problem? Well, that's actually a slightly misleading way of looking at it. The, the real question with this particular MacBook is what isn't a problem because it's everything. Let me explain. All right, so full disclosure, I've actually owned this MacBook for about six months now, and I was originally going to make a repair video on it, and then I ended up not making any video on it because it bothers me so very much. But I figured, you know, I might as well share it with you guys why this thing makes me wanna throw it out of a window. Like I said in the intro, this seems like a perfectly normal 2017 13-inch MacBook Pro. Now, yeah, was this a fairly overpriced model when it came out? Sure, this particular specification, which has some upgrades, the 16 gigabytes of RAM, the upgraded Core i5, this would have been over $2,000 five years ago. So keep that in mind. It's tough even to know where to start. So uh, I guess we'll start with performance because right now this machine is working. And that's a weird thing to specify. Oftentimes when you're talking about a MacBook, you don't necessarily need to say that it's currently working, but with this one, you do. But when it is working, it scores 2,599 in Cinebench multi-core. Now that is pretty bad especially when you consider that this is a $2,000 plus laptop from just 2017. You can get better performance than this out of a 2012 unibody 15 inch MacBook Pro or out of any number of 15 inch MacBook Pros from 2012 and after. This thing was underpowered from the start, but this thing is so bad that I don't even care about the fact that it is quite frankly lethargic and feels much older than five years because there's something even more catastrophically wrong with this MacBook, and that is that it's haunted. Because here's what happens. Randomly, out of the blue, with no explanation, the thing will just completely freeze. And I'm not just talking about a spinning beach ball of death or a, an application not responding. I'm talking the screen becomes a static image nothing moves, the trackpad stops clicking, it sits there for a couple of seconds, and then it's gone, it's dead. Sometimes it comes back, sometimes it doesn't. If it does, then there's about a 65% chance that the issue is going to continue happening pretty much constantly every couple of minutes for as long as the battery lasts. And if it doesn't come back, then usually it likes to sort of take a nap, I would say, for, oh, six to 25 days. And also, if you decide that you're fed up with this machine, as is perhaps understandable, shut it down, close it, put it in a drawer, leave it for, oh, I don't know, a couple of weeks and come back to it, you'll find that it simply doesn't turn on. You have to leave it connected to power for about 72 hours, and then you've got a chance of it booting up all on its own. The power button seems for all intents and purposes, not to be connected to the actual turning on of the MacBook. It's merely a button that you can press to express your frustration with its terribleness. And you might think, Luke, there's probably a simple explanation for that. I'm sure the board is damaged, or maybe it has some water damage. Well, I have taken this thing to the Apple Store multiple times. The first time I went was in its one of its nap period, so it refused to turn on at all, and they looked at me like I was an insane person who had brought them a MacBook that he pulled out of a lake. So I was like, all right, let me just come back. I went back when it was working, and they said that nothing was wrong with it. 
which is clearly not the case because, I mean, I think I can tell when something's wrong with the MacBook, but it wasn't wrong at that moment when they ran that diagnostic test. And so they said, it's perfectly fine, have a nice day. I even took this to a third party shop and they said, well, it's clearly not great because they saw it crash, but they couldn't figure out what the issue was. So I'm left with no conclusion other than it's haunted. So what we have here is a MacBook which can't reliably be used for more than an hour at a time, but can't be diagnosed for repair. Now, the easiest solution to this problem would be to replace the logic board. You can get them on eBay for, it seems like under $300, which doesn't seem like the worst price in the world until you realize that I paid $220 for the whole thing. And even working ones like this aren't really worth more than $400, or at least that's the most that I would ever conceivably pay for something like this. So replacing the logic board would put me at almost 600 bucks, uh, which is a terrible price for this particular MacBook. And even if I were to do that and fix the issue, I really don't think it would fix the issue that is this entire MacBook's existence. The display on this MacBook Pro is really weird. And, and this is actually an issue that I have noticed on friends' laptops, people that have 2016 and 2017 MacBooks, both 13 and 15 inch, both with or without a touch bar, they all have this weird issue where the display is splotchy and discolored. The other thing that really bothers me is the battery life. And this isn't even just a, oh, Luke, you bought a five-year-old Mac, of course the battery's gonna be worn out. No, this thing is at like 92% capacity. It has 80 cycles on it, and the battery life is abysmal. I finally got it to charge up about 30 minutes before I started this video, and I'm currently at 78% battery, down from 99% battery half an hour ago. Yeah, I ran a Cinebench test, but that's it. And it chewed through that much of the battery? That's not good. That does not bode well for using this thing for extended periods of time. Not that you could, because the MacBook demon is gonna come and hunt you down and crash the thing, and you're putting up with all of this issue just so that you can have the, the luxury of using a touch bar and a butterfly keyboard. This butterfly keyboard isn't stuck or anything. It's just the sort of default level of terribleness of a butterfly keyboard. But just, I mean, do you see why I've been sitting on this thing for six months? It's not feasible to repair. It's not feasible to use. It's not feasible to sell because I don't wanna be, you know, the guy at the beginning of the horror movie that sells the haunted demon box to someone. That's not how I imagine my day going. Um, I, I'm stuck with this thing. I can't do anything with it. Okay, realistically what I could do is take it apart and sell the bits. The screen, it works even though it's splotchy, so I would sell that for a discount. The top case is pretty good, the battery's pretty good. I could probably get my money back on it, but that's about where the possibilities with this thing stop. I really wish that it were possible to replace a logic board without having to replace everything associated with it. The RAM, the storage, all of that stuff. But that's the way that this generation works. If you have an issue on that logic board, you gotta toss the whole thing away with 16 gigabytes of RAM and half a terabyte of storage on it. And that's a real shame. For less money than this MacBook Pro, I could just go ahead and buy this MacBook Pro. This is a Retina from, I think this is a mid-2014. I've made a video on it. It was really cheap, it was 300 bucks, or I think 289 is what I paid for it. So it's less than what you would pay for a good one of these. But these things are fairly bulletproof, with the exception of the display coating that wears off. You can upgrade the storage. So if, like me, you buy one with 128 gigabytes, you can go on Amazon and buy storage replacement for it. I'll put a link to that down below. It's really easy, it's really cheap, and that's just not something that you can do on these later models. And if you do need to replace a logic board, these are even cheaper. It's like 100 bucks, 
pop it in, easy, you're done. But I'll tell you what I'm really excited for, and that is when this new Apple Silicon generation starts to get really, really cheap. When these MacBooks start coming down in price in a couple of years, they are going to be absolutely fantastic value. I can see the M1 MacBook Pro and M1 MacBook Air dropping into the five to $600 price range towards the end of this year or early next year. And those are going to be absolutely phenomenal value. Not only are they gonna be incredibly powerful and incredibly reliable and supported for a really long time, but they're also, I think, going to hold their value really well. That used to be really true of a lot of Macs. They, they kept their value for many more years than equivalent PCs. But recently, with these Intel models, they've been so bad, and now they've been so embarrassed by Apple Silicon, that they're plummeting in value much faster than they used to in the old days. Back in 2019, a five-year-old MacBook was still eight or $900, but now it's like 350. And this thing was over two grand. That's crazy, that does not usually happen with Apple products. And I think it won't happen with Apple Silicon. So if you are in the market for a MacBook around $500 right now, please do not buy one of these wretched, cursed, hideous beings, wait a little bit. Buy something old and cheap for now, sure, but wait until the M1 stuff starts to come down in price. That's when you wanna make your long-term purchase decision. Don't long-term purchase an Intel product right now. That would be my advice to you. And if you doubt my assessment of Apple Silicon as being supported for years and years and years, look no further than the iPhone 6S. It's almost seven years old and it's still supported today. If Apple can keep iOS running on a seven-year-old iPhone, how long do you think they're gonna run it on an M1 MacBook Pro? I think possibly 10 years. So let's see what happens. I'm definitely excited. Let me know what you think. Did I get a, a cursed demon MacBook? Would you have paid $200 for that? I guess that's kind of a trick question because nobody in their right mind should. But anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.